wakati dumela ngo khayalo dumelisa ke mora matla o pane ke mosimo la go pampre starta ke ene ne wa ga mo di hapula mo ka lobe ka setswana sa gae tsho ba gae sekala amo ka la mo gospel church what now ke it's been a long time it's been a long time uh, welcome to our show welcome to our podcast uh, please continue to subscribe uh, we are on spotify we are on apple uh, podcast and we are everywhere on the digital platforms but then on this episode we have uh, one of the pastors who tend to to be controversial on social media murutwa ka jeko good man how are you doing i'm good yes sir you look like a young pastor yes sir yeah. <laughs> i'm very young yeah <laughs> i must say young you are not like back then when bar muruti and then muriri and the vibe you know man i'm laid back uh, i realize there's no need for all of that is it yeah no there's no need for all of that for those formalities uh, us trying to seem big and important uh, we, we are liberated from it uh, but uh, but the thing is when i was growing up you wouldn't say do me so yeah. you have to put pasta pasta yeah um i understand uh, i mean those days we we understood respect to be about the title mm. we understood one significance to be about the title and we have grown to realize that uh, titles don't make us titles don't make the man they don't mm. make the woman uh, it's about what you carry on the inside okay. and and above being known as a pastor or a so-called man of god um, i really wanted just to be a son of god the son of god that is the most important thing to me so uh, i don't get offended when i'm called to me so in fact i prefer it yeah but then also for us it's a, i think it's a bit difficult just to say do me so. yeah. especially if you grew up from your afm yeah. Yeah. your assemblies yeah. Yeah. your full gospel i understand <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I also grew up at Assemblies of God, so I, I understand very well what you're saying. Listen, respect is important. Uh, honoring a man of God is important. But I've also realized that you could call someone with a big title, say very respectful words in front of them, yeah. but actually in your heart you harbor mm. resentment mm. and disrespect. And mm. you are saying other things about them, them yeah. when they are not there. So I realized that that's that's not where it is. That's not that's not really important. Um, and also, it's not really important what people call us. But how does God view us? When I am in front of God, how does He view me? It's always important. What will God say? Not yeah. what is your opinion? What, what people say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so when someone prefers to call me Pastor Mazibu or Pastor Ndumi, so I don't stop them. I, 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 I you know, it's, it's okay. Whatever makes you comfortable, but just know it's not a must to uh, call you Pastor. Yeah, to title me and to decorate my name. Okay. <laughs> uh, but then before you could just start on everything, I just need you to greet our viewers there. Yeah, man. And and just introduce yourself a little bit. Wow, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> what do we say? Um, I am Dumi Somazivugo. Hello to the viewers out there. Uh, it's really a, a, a privilege to be here. Thanks for the invite, Neil. Um, uh, Dumi Somazivugo, born and bred in uh, a town called Newcastle in KwaZulu Natal. That's oh home. Uh, I reside here now in, in Johannesburg. I'm a father of three. Uh, I'm a pastor, but I don't pastor a church. Uh, I'm serving at the church where I'm at. Um, what else do we know? I'm a podcaster. Yes. Uh, and we're going to talk more about that, I guess. But yeah, that's uh, also uh, professionally, I'm in the marketing, marketing and branding. Yeah. yeah, marketing and branding uh, business. That's that's what I do for a living. That's, that's what I want us to start it. But before you go there, sure. are you done with the kids? <laughs> 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 hey, my bro. You, you know what? Three, three is a lot, bro. Three is a lot. Especially in serious economy. Yeah, yeah in serious economy, it's, it's crazy, bro. So, three is a lot. Um, but I do intend to remarry. Ooh. And so I'm open to have uh, one more child, maybe, with the person that I'll marry. Uh, 
um, because I can't come. <coughs> I can't come and say, ah, Mina, Mina, I was married, I've got kids, so I know this thing is sharp. I would, I, it wouldn't be fair on, yeah. on a new person, unless, of course, uh, someone who's older, who's already got kids of their own. We'll, we'll come back to that, eh? We'll come back to mm, that. Mm. I want us to talk about the branding and marketing sure. in the gospel. Yeah, yeah. More especially when it comes to our artists, our musicians. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you think they are doing it more or... Because from my point of view, I think that's where we lack most. I'll have a 12 budget for everything. Yeah. But then when it comes to marketing, yeah. I don't have. Yeah, yeah. It, it's 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 tough. Um, even that 200,000 budget for a recording is is, is it's, it's a squeeze. Yeah. yeah it's, a it's, it's a studio. It's a studio budget. Budget for, for an EP. Mm, mm. Some people will try and take that to a live uh, uh, recording, and I've seen people full of miracles uh, with that kind of budget it's it's really a squeeze the the the, the, the truth is um the gospel music industry just the music industry even generally it's 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 a money game right um it's a money game you you need money for everything the cameras and lights and equipment and it's venues stage. and staging and marketing like you're saying all of that it's money and 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 so even when people our you know the fans mm. the supporters of gospel music they must understand this and not complain too much about uh, ticket prices uh, you must understand that it takes a lot and especially if you don't have corporate sponsors Corporate mm. sponsors are not so attracted to gospel music. You do get some who are who are attracted to the big, bigger outfits, the big groups, yeah. the bigger, more established mm. artists. Mm. Mm. But you come in, you just trying to get started. You really have to be very convincing with your with your value proposition. So uh, that's when you come in as a as a uh, brand. Yeah, yeah. That's where I, that's where I come in. So I I I I'm passionate about building brands. Mm. Okay, and. Um, Brand, the word brand is not, it's not a website, it's not a logo, it's not a poster, it's not a mm. t-shirt like, like you're wearing, mm. you know, we call that branding. It's a loose term, yeah. it's not really, brand is not that. Yeah. Um, brand is what someone thinks and feels when they see or hear your name. Mm -hmm. Or your company name, or, mm. your, or, or they come into when contact. They see that logo outside. Yes, there. that's right. When they, when they hear about that artist, what, what, what do they think? What is the perception that comes to their mind? And so, brand building is that process where you, you craft your identity. Mm -hmm. You must be very clear about who you are, mm -hmm. what you stand for, um, who you are sent to, because. As a brand, you, you are not sent to everybody. Mm. Not everyone is your target audience. And this is what where people miss it. They think, I'm just here and everybody, I'm sent to the whole world. No, there are people who are not going to hear you. And then there are those who will be able to hear you. Yes, and even, even myself as a minister, as a podcaster, whatever I do, I have to be comfortable with that fact that I'm not for everyone. Not everyone will like me. I'm not for everybody. I'm not gifted for everybody. I'm not assigned to everybody. But I need to be clear who, who am I assigned to, right? And then part of the um, marketing process then is to communicate effectively to those people mm. in a language they understand, mm. not just uh, dialect or uh, vernacular when I say language, but words are framed in a particular way for certain ears and minds, mm. right? And so, yeah, and, and so that's what I do. So everything else becomes a byproduct of this whole process I'm talking about. By that I mean the websites, the, the posters, the social media, the logos, the, the promotional material like you're wearing, all of that is a byproduct. It's all communication. It's all brand communication, but you can't, it can't be effective if the brand the core. is not crafted. Mm. Who are you? What do you stand for? What makes you different? And 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 this is all, this is where gospel brands don't get it right because you have to really. Firstly, uh, we, we we are not like any other industry. We have to get our identity from God. 
in the gospel industry. Mm. Mm. Uh, if you say, yeah, I'm assigned to, 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 to start a ministry or to be a gospel artist, you gotta get that from God. You don't just thumb suck it, right? Mm. That's what makes us different in this, mm. in, in, mm. in this field. So you, you, you get it from God, you, you, you concretize it, you crystallize it. This is who I am. This is what God says I must do. This is whom he's sending me to do. And you must be clear about it, right? And then you can get going. You're, it's very clear to see, I mean, it's very easy to see a path of a gospel musician who knows their identity mm. and who, who, who does something. I can, you know, there are very wonderful examples that I can quote of people that you can see that brand building process they on is beautiful. Mm. It's, it's, they know who they are, they know who they're they saying, stick to and they're sticking to it. Sure. It's beautiful to watch. Uh, because like, uh, I'm, I'm one person who always tend to analyze things. <clears throat> I may not put it out there because uh, we we are always saying the ticket pricing are expensive and all of yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. If we compare them to the secular yeah. the gigs, I mean in secular, uh, 120 will get you inside. Mm, 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 mm. And uh, while else on our side, uh, the entry ticket or entry mm, level is mm. 350. <laughs> <laughs> what that 350 I still have to go to Eish, to Sun City yeah, yeah. to Hoi Petro mm, I still mm, have to mm. book that side Eish, man it's 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 <laughs> it's crazy but but um <coughs> secular um like we we're saying earlier secular has got the advantage of having corporate sponsorships alcohol brands Sporting brands, the Bev, everything. The, ah, they go for these things. For us in gospel, it's a challenge to be sponsored by uh, Heineken. <laughs> Maybe the, <laughs> they could be willing, but for now we were like, we will not allow ourselves. We are, we are too afraid. <laughs> the, the thing is, uh, let's let's go to to. To Sun City. Mm. If I book only the arena, the bar is there. <laughs> and when you get inside, yeah. people are in another cloud level. <laughs> that's, that's the truth we want to talk about that. The, the, the gospel concert audiences, those people are tipsy. Half of them, <laughs> they drink at the bar. <laughs> you know? So. It's a question that we should discuss. Is it wrong to take... Uh, I'm, I'm about to ask you this, <laughs> as, as Muruti, as a pastor. <laughs> because there, yeah. there, there are new terms that yeah. the, the Gen X or whatever they call themselves, mm. sipping saint and non-sipping saint. <laughs> yes. Uh, is it wrong for Bazalani to drink? Your understanding from yeah. what God says in the word. Sure, sure. From what God says in the word, and I, I, I did it. I did a, an episode on this on my podcast. I've not, I've not. Oh, I did release it. Yeah, we did release it. Um, the sin, as it relates to alcohol, the sin. The Bible clarifies it as um, drunkenness. Yeah, that's where the sin is. So it's not wrong for me to have my no, it's not my birth. No, it's not. But I should not be drunk. Don't be drunk. Yes, that's just a clear, we can go to scriptures and have an argument about it, but really it goes it down said, to it. Your understanding, your understanding according to the word, I don't want yeah. your opinion. Yeah, yeah, according because to the word. Because in most cases we are sharing our own opinion. Sure, sure. Because uh, this is one topic that uh, can divide the church. <laughs> big time, big time. I mean, the Apostle Paul says, um, don't don't just drink water only. Yeah. Uh, take a little wine. And um, at that time, he, he was advising, I think it was Timothy, yeah, it was Timothy, advising Timothy concerning uh, a stomach ailment that he had. Mm. He said, don't drink water only. Also have wine, it will help you in this mm. regard, you know. And, and all the scriptures that do in the New Testament, the Jew address alcohol. I trace it from the vantage point of drunkenness. Mm. Um, taking a glass of wine, taking whatever you take, um, with and knowing your limits, and having self-control, that is not sinful. Biblically speaking, self-control. Self-control, but <laughs> it's a challenge. It's a big challenge because in our context in South Africa, right, we are living in a country and in a community. Um, that has got an alcohol problem. Yeah. Ah. 
you know, big I, I, I realized this during hard lockdown for you see? you see <laughs> the passion <laughs> when when people going all out just yeah, came boom. <laughs> <laughs> when when the bev stores were open, remember the queues Yo. that were there and how people struggled. Yeah, hey, but, 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 but we, we have an alcoholic problem in mm -hmm. South Africa. When and then when we can't control our alcohol because once you remember once alcohol was allowed back to be sold, uh, other things started to increase as well. Mm. GPV started to increase, drunken driving, mm. crimes, violent crimes again started to show up mm. uh, through the hospitals again, and the president to shut down the country. They shut down the sale of alcohol. It was about three times up and down, selling, closing, selling, because we we've got a problem in South Africa um, with that. And so, when Christians in the African context, churches, they prohibit alcohol. I understand. We are erring on the side of caution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's something wrong in our psyche as South Africans that causes us to not be able to control our, our, our drinking. It's a you, challenge. You just touched on GBV and <clears throat> in most cases, uh, especially within the church, topics like that, yeah. we just wrap them under the table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we don't speak out. Uh, we have seen few pastors going through trials yeah. because of uh, rape allegations Amen. and stuff like that. Amen. How do you then deal with that in, in, in the church? Or like there's a sister who comes here and says, Amen. Because if a sister is pregnant, they're going to put her down. Mm -hmm. and who plays <clears throat> drums there, you'll continue to serve in the church. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. the rata who's serving in church, mm. you know, she's, she's been she's suspended out. for three months. Yeah. Yeah, and she's at home, not allowed to come to church, the shame. It's 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 a it's a it's a crazy double standard. The mm. bad double standard that, 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 that we have. Um you, you raise something important when you open your question. The fact that we don't like talking in the church. Mm. We don't like talking. Especially about issues that are serious, that are controversial. But are difficult. Hmm. We, we, we like uh, um, brushing stuff under the carpet in the hope that it will disappear. It won't disappear. The issue doesn't go away. <laughs> <laughs> um, we need to be more open as the Church of Christ to having tough conversations. You know, and, and, and this is my present calling right now. Uh, but. We need to have tough conversations within our spaces, yeah. in our churches, within our families. And when we do not have these open conversations, these ills, they find the perfect breeding ground because these things grow in silence and in darkness. So we must be willing to talk, number one. Then we, at the, as a church, we don't know how to handle our sinners, <laughs> if I can call it that. We don't know how to handle our fallen soldiers. Yeah. Yes, we don't know how to handle people that are troubled in their work with God. Muruti. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a nail. Uh, there's someone who said, no man, uh, Neo has raped me and all of that. Yeah. What's the, ro the role of the church there? Mm. The, 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 the role of the church is... Because remember, mm. I can say, no man, I've asked forgiveness from God. Mm. 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 And then what, what, what happens now within the church? Mm. There's the victim and then mm. there's the me. Mm. The, the, the victim must be protected. The victim must be protected, must be, um, what's the word, restored, mm. healed. Mm. The victim must be protected. And immediately when such an allegation comes, we must know it, it, it's, it's an issue for law enforcement now. Mm -hmm. And as a church, we are afraid of involving police. In, the victim must be given freedom to involve police. The issue must be treated with respect and discretion because you don't want to repeatedly shame the victim. 
because mm. church people are going to talk, ask questions, mm. blah, blah, blah. The pastor, whoever knows the leadership, must protect that issue, not hiding it, but you, you, you are protecting the victim from further victimization within the community. Right? Um, the, both, both parties, uh, even the, pep, the alleged <laughs> perpetrator, yeah. he also needs to be rehabilitated, assisted, and, and, and he should not just be, if it's a man, he should not just be allowed just to continue with life as normal. There has to be an investigation in the church thoroughly by the leadership involving the families where, where, um, where possible. Um, the victim must be able and be allowed to not feel guilty mm. about going to the cops. Okay? Counseling and therapy must be made available for both the perpetrator and the victim. But in all of this, the person who we are prioritizing the most here mm. is the victim. Okay. The victim. You, you mentioned something like we need to be discreet in church. Yeah. Yeah. We, we have this tendency in, in church, let's go and pray for brother and do me. <laughs> We and Zane, uh, uh, as, as as <laughs> <laughs> Once you find out what he did, as <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I want us to, to go back to, to something you mentioned earlier. On. Sorry, I pressed the button by mistake. I hope the sound is still okay. So, is, are we still fine? Okay. 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 Uh, you mentioned something earlier on that you will you are open to remarry. Yeah. <laughs> How was it, the marriage first? Yeah, uh, the marriage was good. Um, I, I married a wonderful lady. Um, we met in church. Mm. Um, when my family got to the free state. Uh, Velcom. Velcom, that's yeah. right, that's right. Got there. Uh, a, a, a woman of God, a woman of prayer, she's a worshiper. Uh, she's a pastor even herself. Um, marriage was, uh, I mean, marriage gave us three wonderful children, mm. you know. Um, marriage marriage um, was good and we were ministering to marriages. I mean, um, for I think about seven years I was speaking on radio on relationships and marriages. Mm. Mm. Um, and doing seminars as well, doing speaking at conferences on the issue of relationships and particularly what what knocked me so much about my divorce was the fact that I failed in the area where I was ministering. You were supposed and to be an I, expert. I was supposed to be an expert. I was supposed to know <clears throat> how to you know how to sort myself out as well. Mm. So it it, it it brought a lot it brought a lot of shame to me and embarrassment at the time. Um, the fact that I, I, I felt like I destroyed this institution that I feel so strongly about, mm. that I love so much myself, mm. and I'm called mm. for, it was tough, you know. Um, I felt like a hypocrite, I felt like, you know, um, and I, I, I even felt like uh, that's, that's, that's what people were probably thinking about me, whether that's true or not. Mm. That's what I felt. And people are probably saying, ah, this guy, uh, what happened now? <laughs> you know. Um, but the truth is, there were, there were some events and some speaking engagements mm. where we would both show up where I was speaking on it. And I would speak powerfully. Minister, marriages were healed. And our own marriage was bleeding. Shock. Crazy. At, at the, and people just didn't know. And. Uh, we had to keep the image going. We had to keep the image going. We had to keep the facade. We had to keep uh, the look, you know. And I was a pastor preaching, pastoring at the church, uh, preaching powerfully. People were blessed, but they don't know that we are in a bad space. Things are bad at you home. Know, things, things are bad at home, and we are not. We're not okay. And, mm. and I think when we then separated and when we divorced, I think it, 
it, it, it, people were really shocked. I know they were shocked. No way, guys. Because that. now I'm thinking like, I've, I've checked your stuff and sure. you, I mean, you'd, you'd be a marriage counselor. But then how did you fail at, mm. at your marriage? Mm. When did you realize that this thing is not working out? This thing, we, no. we are not put together. You know, um, I still don't know if I can use the word not good together. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Um, you, we pastored a, a, a church. We had a period of like five years where we were senior pastors of a church in Velcom. So mm. landed in Velcom, right? To take this story. Landed in Velcom before I could finish high school uh, with my dad. Mm. He was being transferred to a, a, a church. A church there, there the yeah. Of God. That's how we came. To the free state. So then I left, matriculated, went to the free state to study uh, uh, at the University of the Free State in UFC, yeah. I didn't, sorry, I, I left two from one day. Then ministered there uh, very well, worked well there for eight years. Mm -hmm. Then came back to Velcom. To Velcom. To Pastor now. Mm -hmm. So I'm taking it in that period where now. I'm back to Belgium for the second time to pass time. So my dad had now established that ministry and I came to take over the senior pastors. That was the hardest five years of our lives. That was horrible. We just put it plain. The marriage? No. The, 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 in the church? Let, let me say everything. Let me say, when I say hardest five years of our lives, I mean everything. Okay. Um, we arrived in Belgium with a marriage that was good, was intact. Um, I think at the time we had one child. Yeah, one child. Then shortly after that, the second one came. Maybe I'm, I'm, I'm whatever. But we were really parents coming there to minister, mm. you know. Now, things were so hard ministry-wise from the beginning because we are taking over a church that had serious problems. Serious problems. Mm. Administratively, <clears throat> spiritually, um, interpersonally, in terms of people's relationships mm. with one another. People were, were hurt. Physically, emotionally, emotionally everything. And spiritually, just, they were just hurt in the church for, because of things that had happened before. Mm. Um, uh, people were also quite troubled in their lives because this is a is a is a city in Belcom that had a former a, a city in the Free State which is called Belcom that yeah. had a, a, a former <coughs> glory. Uh, it was a mining town that was once affluent, mm. and then uh, even even now it's it's on the decline. Still, uh, it's not it, economically, mm. the mines began to close, so a lot of people were out of work, a lot of frustration in the city with governance and, and all of those so people which is not in you know, a state mm. in the city, a lot of despair. The church also, the church world in general, had done a lot of damage in the city as well. Mm. People were no, longer, were no longer trusting the, 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 the church because of abuses, because of, you know, all the mess ups that, that, that happened in the church. With false prophets, with this and that. And so, I'm coming into this environment very uh, bright-eyed. I'm young, I'm vibrant. Uh, full of the word. Full, full of the word, full of ideas, full of vision. About the church. About the vision and the city. And I'm passionate and I want to do so many things. And God is speaking to me mm. to do so many things through the church and for, uh, to fulfill a particular vision in the church. Um, and we hit wall after wall after wall. First, first coming in, there was complete mistrust of us. Mm -hmm. She didn't trust us, just mis 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 didn't understand us. Also, remember years ago, before I left, I was a youth in the church. Mm. 
So you've got people here who know me as a youth. They're getting. Mm. Now I'm coming back. I'm going to be their senior yeah, pastor. senior pastor. You know, people who <coughs> feel that um, they know what needs to be done. They know the church better. Yeah. They have been here yeah. longer than They've you. Been here. I've been here. Yeah. And even even when you were gone, I was here. we stay. <laughs> <laughs> She must be a mama root. She must be a mama root. There are those expectations, you know, and I, I try by all means to protect her from that mama root pressure. Mm. I don't know how well I succeeded, but it was definitely there, right? Um, and, you know, we have to summarize things. Things just continue to be in a, in a state of difficulty and decline. We were not doing well personally, mm. on a personal level, um, financially, um, you know, even emotionally and just psychologically, you know, I can speak for myself, definitely not doing well. Mm. In the, the church problems and pressures were so real. It, you, you, here I was trying to turn around this organization, this trying to turn around these people to think differently, to have a different world view about ministry and, and, and what can be done through church mm. and what must be done. People who were, people who were exhausted, they were exhausted those people, I mean, they had been through it all. <laughs> and I'm coming here with all of this fire and all of this and I'm demanding that things be done on time, things be done properly, um, administratively, I'm changing doctrine, changing doctrine. I'm spiritually, I'm shifting gears. I'm causing this, tr I want this big Titanic to, to, to just tear. And <clears throat> but, um, our lives then, I'm telling this story to come back to the answer of yeah. marriage. Our lives um, were all about fighting, fighting problems. Not really fighting each other, mm. fighting problems. We we never were in a really a state where uh, you know marriage where we were really fighting and arguing a lot yeah. and screaming at each other. We were never that that couple. Yes, we'd have our, our moments. Those but, days, yeah. Uh, we we're, were never that. When I hear of other couples, where we would argue four times a week, and I, yeah, I mean I don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> but our, our lives was about, well, were about fighting problems, church problems financial problems, parenting problems, um, business problems, us trying to, you know, develop and make a good life for ourselves and the family. It was about fighting problems. And in the whole process of doing that, we lost sight of, our, of each other. Mm -hmm. Lost sight of the marriage. Okay. And so at the end of the day, when then we leave Velko and come to Johannesburg, in 2018, it's only then we realized the damage that of what we've been through. We left there brutally, we were torn up as people. Mm. We had just hurt. We had, had things being said about us. Mm. <sighs> Ridiculous stuff. We had, had people leave the church. Um, thing you know, pastors opposing us, uh, you know, all of that, all of that, we just, you were a mess, right? We came, and I took that decision as a man that, yeah, there's ministry we, we, we are doing here, but I need to save my family. Mm. And I left. You left the church? Left the church. Technically closed it down. Left. No, my family is, yeah. is more important. Is more important. And the kind of life that my family deserves is not this life where my kids are struggling, where my, my young wife is unhappy. Not unhappy because of me, but unhappy because of the surrounding the, the environment. environment. And we are being opposed and the, the, the people who, whom we are sent to. So, save, I said I'm going to save the family. Mm. 
there is no ministry assignment that can be more important than this, than this family, than these children. And that was the decision, that was the point of the decision to move. And we get here because we realize, wow, we, we are damaged. This marriage is damaged, mm. you know. And, you know, in that long <laughs> thing I've just said now is to answer you, when did I realize we're in trouble? That's why. Because I've, I've, I've noticed or paid attention, especially uh, post hard lockdown, we've seen a lot of people divorcing and all of that. A friend of mine, I asked him, like, what he said, like, people, they don't really know each other. Yeah. You wake up in the morning, go to work, mm -hmm. come back, sleep, weekend to Komajite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't spend time with your person, so the lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but hey, mm -hmm. so all of that, now you close down the church, but divorce, you have to face the people now. You never went through a depression, you never went through a thing of a shame. And now there are also kids involved. Yep. How did the whole process affect the kids? Mm. It was hell, man. Um, the, we're talking about the year 2019, 2020 now. Mm. Um, and... <laughs> You talk about a lot of people being locked down together during lockdown. Ew. So that that happened to us. So, so my, our kids went to my parents in case they to visit my, my grandparents. Mm. And then while they're there, still shuts down the country. So the kids can't come back. Then uh, the, the grandparents are cool. Let them, Let them stay. It's fine, no problem. But in, at that time, we are now being locked down together. Two. And we are we are basically separated, even though we are in the same address. And it's just tense. You just need a strong mentality yeah. to be strong yeah. in the yeah. Lord. <laughs> just tense. I think what what helped me during that time was that I was busy um, with uh, the online church technical work for my church, mm. at the time of the church I was sitting at. Uh, that helped me to be busy because I was, you know, I was the one doing the videos, the editing, and all the media work. Uh, mm. for the, I think that helped me to be busy at the time. But the fact of the matter is we're stuck together, you know, under lockdown. So lockdown opens, you know, it ends, blah, blah, blah. Um, then we, we officially separate you know, later on, mm. a couple of months after that. Okay. We, 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 we separate. And in the year of 2020, when that happened, I started, I developed an issue with my back. With my back. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it got so bad that for about six or seven months, I spent it just lying down. Oh. Just flat down. My back was in such pain. In 2013, I had had a back operation. Mm. So the problem is now coming back, back. in 2020. And it's multiplied in terms of intensity. Mm. Okay, and I'm just down, I couldn't do anything. Um, I was working at some agency, um, a marketing and branding agency. I was working in nine to five then, and lose that job. I'm separated. My back is showing me flames. Showing me flames, and then <clears throat> I'm diagnosed with uh, depression and anxiety. I I left the church that we were serving together at at the time. So you decided to leave the church. Yeah. Um, with just how things happened with the divorce, so from mm. the, uh, then all of this happened. I'm churchless. I'm sick. Mm. <laughs> all of this happened at the same time. And later that year, I go for a back operation. 
the second one, in October of that year. And now I have to recover from surgery and all of that. And depression is not letting me go. I'm dealing with my mental health, I'm dealing with all of this, the divorce. I can't see the kids because I can't, can't, I can't physically go mm. to see the kids, um, which is tough. And man, hard, hard, hard period. Hard, hard period. That was, that was tough. So you ask how it affected me, that, that's, that, that's how it affected me. Um, how did it affect the kids? By God's grace, the kids um, were stable. Mm. And they still are. But yeah. then doesn't it affect them mentally like when they continue to grow up? Um, I guess I can say that is still yet to be seen. Um, I cannot for sure say it won't affect. Yeah. But you could you, you we we gotta do our best as parents in such situations. Number one, to give them a stable environment. Mm. To reassure them of our love mm. for them, towards them. We gotta spend time with them. Uh, we might not be living together, but I really love spending time with my children. Mm. You know, I make sure they know they have a dad. Yeah, that's what that I've, I've seen that. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I really make sure that they know that they 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 know that they are loved, that at least their needs are taken care of. Mm. Um, they know that mommy loves them, daddy loves them, and mommy and daddy don't hate each other. Oh, sure, you know. Yeah. So, you ask me about long-term effects, I don't know. Uh, time will tell if we have done well or not. Mm. Time will tell. With, with what you have told me and you mentioned you would still like to get married again. Don't you see it, do you see it? Yo! As, as I realized, I wrote it on Facebook recently, I said, I realized, no guys, I... Marriage is the heat of my die on ship. <laughs> I love marriage, I love family. Uh, and so yeah, I would do it again. Yeah. So you would advise people like get married. There's nothing wrong with marriage. Yeah. There's nothing wrong. The the thing is, <laughs> especially if you focus on socials, you'll see that it doesn't have a good PR. Even marriage in the church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Even in the church, yeah. yeah. There is definitely an attack, you know, on slot of marriages. I have to I have to admit that. There is, it's tough. Because uh, people get married this year, next year they divorce. Ah. Like, what the hell? Yeah, I, I get you, I get you. Uh, but there's not we, we must know that marriage was created by God. Yeah. Anything created by God is good. Mm. Marriage is good, it's God. We as people need to find out where are we messing with God. Because it's it's our involvement as people that's messing with God. Yeah. We are the ones not having it. Actually I think we mess up everything, man. As people man. Yeah. <laughs> No, we mess up a lot as Huge, people. Human involvement. Because we we find something that's good and then yeah. you just throw it in here. Mm -hmm. So I will never say, I'll never say marriage doesn't work, marriage is bad, no way, marriage is beautiful, man. Mm. And I had good years in, in my marriage, you know. I, I can only hope my ex-wife can say the same thing. We had some good years and some good benefits of marriage and I mean, marriage gave us children. Our marriage was a blessing and a ministry to so many people. So marriage, is, marriage can be good, it is good. It is when we fail. Uh, at it, that we have got to take responsibility. Mm. So it's us. Do, do you think the leaders within the church or pastors, they put pressure into young lions to get married? Uh, should I say because they're young lions, they like sketch a lot? They do, they do, and it's out of fear that we are going to impregnate women. Uh, and, and, and there's this thing in the church that a pastor who's not married can't be respected like a pastor who's married and I don't know where that would come from yeah, they're like, ah, you're, you're a pastor, you're not married, ah, you need to marry now we can't be ministered to by someone who's not married and it's really just nonsense um, but certainly there is that pressure mm. to throw people who are powerful and gifted, throw them into marriage what if a young lion wants to be a Paul? what if he does want to be a Paul? there, sh there shouldn't be anything wrong with it Marriage is not an achievement, guys. 
it's not an achievement, it's not a, I don't know, it's not a prize. It's a beautiful thing to go into. And if God has called you to it, He can use that marriage to develop your life and improve it. Like a lot. But it's not a prize, it's not a, a mark of importance and significance in life. Yeah. Yeah, ne. So uh, while we are still on, on the church and the young lions, yeah. uh, there are those who, when we talk as much, hey, Bafit, I'm struggling from this. Uh, I'm struggling from this mm. in terms of uh, addiction to pornography. Uh, in the bathroom while we are still waiting for you. <laughs> How then do we solve those issues or we just, hey man, let's lay hands on you? Mm. Like I said, the church sometimes does not have the tools developed in the local church to assist believers who struggle. Mm. And it could be anything. Mm. It's not just porn, it could be alcohol, drugs, character issues. Someone might have an issue of stealing, someone has an issue of overeating. We, we want to pray about everything. We want to spiritualize everything. Some things need certain tools. Some things need a psychologist. Yeah. Some things need a financial advisor. I don't think we believe in psychologists uh, and therapists. Uh, we need to. <laughs> if, 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 if we can go to a doctor, a GP, for help, why shouldn't we go to a psychologist for help with our minds? We should be able to, right? Mm. Um, so we, we must realize, I mean, uh, my, my saying is that I talk to Jesus and a therapist. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I talk to Jesus and a therapist, both. Yeah. <laughs> I have both in my life. So it, it, it's very important. We must realize that a person is a, is a whole being. They have a body. Mm. They have a soul, which is the mind, will, and the emotions. And they have a spirit. They are spirit. When we, when we preach, when we pray, in the main, we are addressing the spirit part. Mm. But the mind doesn't get born again when I get born again, when my spirit gets regenerated, when my spirit gets born again. My mind, my emotions, and my body, mm. they don't get born again. I have to know and learn how to crucify them on a daily basis. And unlearn certain things and in life. And uh, bring it under subjection and self-discipline and something as small as it's not small but like a principle like self-discipline it takes a lot to develop it mm. if I've been living 25 years of an undisciplined life I was going wherever I go talking to whoever I talk to drinking and eating whatever I want if, if I want to go to a party at midnight I go <clears throat> and I'm trying to live a different kind of life like you said, it's a process of unlearning, mm. but also I have to learn a new way. And I need help. I'm not gonna, it's not going to happen overnight by going to an altar call and saying, I receive Jesus. I have to unlearn. And so the church needs to adopt and be open to tools that are going to help people. So there are specialities out there that are not just only therapists, other kind of specialties that can help people and equip them and mm. we need to give them the space in the church. And <clears throat> these specialities are sitting in our chairs, in church. Mm. They're doing well professionally there with helping people with their specialities and, and skills. Let's also give them space in the church, within the church, to help the people in the church through those gifts. Sure. The, the gospel or the salvation that is being preached today, mm. Is it relevant to? Is it irre irrelevant to to the big cities, to the rich? Hey man, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the gospel is one. The gospel will never change. The gospel is Jesus Christ, right? Yes, sir. Is Jesus? Jesus came to die for our sins. He died. He rose. Uh, he seated on the right hand of the Father. We can be saved from our sins. That's the gospel, that's the message. Mm. I think your question is speaking to packaging and approach. Mm -hmm. And certainly we can do m m uh, more to improve in that, in terms of city, in terms of 
been ministering to city people. To the burps, yeah. In, in the burps. Um, I often call pastors who are pastoring uh, in the city on my podcast, and I say to them, let's talk about this thing, thing of evangelism and winning souls, right? In, in, in the podcast, you pitch a tent, Two weeks. I'm just thinking about the Ralo Cholela back in the early 2000s. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, he was. He started, I think, you know, our age group started to really see him get to 2000. Right? Yeah. Prophet Ralo has been pushing since 80s, 70s, man. Consistently. Oh. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a wonderful thing. But anyway, in the podcast, you pitch a tent, people, and you hold a, 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 a revival for two weeks. Not two even two weeks, sometimes a month, two months, people start to be the same. Mm. You know, other churches did uh, missionary work, mm. go to a foreign region, and they do mission, missionary work and they talk. And so I always ask pastors my podcast, so what does soul winning look like now in the, in the, in, in, in the burbs? Because you can't walk to someone's house and give them uh, something because the security gates, you need a coat. You need a coat. <laughs> you need this and that. So what does soul winning look like? And so I don't think we have nailed it yet in terms of that aspect of soul winning. Mm -hmm. uh, we've not nailed it <clears throat> in terms of finding a formula that can work in modern suburban areas. Um, so back to your question more, is the gospel being relevant I think because of the way we package it, the way we present it, we can do better. We can do better we than what we are do doing. We're doing. The message will never change. The message is simple. It's about Jesus Christ, but it's about the packaging. Mm. You know? And see, you can do a six hour service. People love it. Here in the burbs, it's, it's tough to do that. <sighs> People got meetings, people got work, fast, life is fast. People understand two hour service or less. Can do a three hour change. Yeah, and you have to package everything that you're going to do within that. Um, so we can definitely do, do more. And I think where the, you see, where in the Great Commission, right? Mm. Jesus was given the Great Commission. Even this term of soul winning, I'm just using it loosely. Loosely, yeah. Jesus gave us a really a commission to disciple. The discipleship is to come back to the church. Discipling people, making them disciplined followers of Christ. Of Christ. Not of us, of Christ. You know. Uh, discipleship. You get you, you you hear people have been coming to church, but you realize they're not growing spiritually. So the problem to Because people have been saved for 10 years. Mm, mm. Have you done anything? Mm. Mm. Nah. They attend church for years, but no one knows them in the church. No one knows where they stay. What are their conditions? Mm. Yeah, they look nice when they come to church, but when they leave church, do they have food? <sighs> Yo. <laughs> That's another thing. <laughs> and we think we are all in the bones of a shop off and we are not. You can you can be living in the burbs and be broke. Mm. <laughs> Being in Joburg doesn't mean that you're rich and Yeah, you can be in the burbs and struggle. And you're like, then we start seeing suicidal rates. And when people commit suicide, we are all shocked. Oh my word, we had no idea because we don't care about each other. There's no sense of community generally in the burbs, but also that spirit has crept into the church. Mm. We've lost our sense of community in the church. You see that brother coming to church, we don't even care about his name, where his parents, what's what guy, is he studying, does he need help? And that, that fellowship is to return. Discipleship, growing, and being intentional about growing people. That's what we need to do better as ministers in these modern places of ours. And that's where we are failing. That's right, sir. That's what I believe. But then the thing that I've paid attention that we we fight a lot against each other yeah. we on socials we are no longer focusing on spreading the love of god 
I mean, if someone is there, then he sees we are fighting. There's no use for them. Mm. I mean, people who go to your IAPAP or whatever, yeah, but they'll come back tomorrow. Mm. Rona, at church, we talk about church head. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we are fighting, we are fighting. Um, one of the things is, is that there is a sort of competition amongst us as mm -hmm. churches, even as pastors. My church is bigger than yours. The numbers, the numbers. band. Then that same spirit goes to our members. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is the same thing. And then we can't even col collaborate, mm. work together. No, there's no one church, bro, that's going to bring revival to any city or any region. There's no one church. It's, it's God is going to work through his body, his mm. area. God is going to change a region, he's going to work through his body, all churches, all ministers. And until we decide to get off our high horses and unite, and find reasons to unite then focusing on the things that divide us we are we are we are not going to see revival we're going to be holding back the move of god because we have to be in one accord mm. like they were you know in, in the early church so this thing of uh, fighting amongst each other it, it it exposes the fact that we are insecure number one that's as leaders the, yeah insecure and it's, a, it's an area of character that needs to develop can be insecure as a leader i mean if you are good at something you know with your podcast um i can be insecure and attack you and fight you mm. because i need to focus on what i'm doing with my podcast you know we need to be instead finding ways to work to, to work together what what commonalities Mm. Where can we find each other? So mm. People are going to force us to compete. Out there. Gonna, that's that's true, yeah. They're going to they're gonna draw up lists, top the lists, numbers, and numbers, all of that. Yeah, they're going to force <laughs> us to do that. <laughs> but uh, the, the, the difference <clears throat> that we have got to maintain being kingdom content creator, mm. I'm just using as an example to speak to the church problem, mm. that we need to focus on the fact that. Your success is my success. Mm, that's true. Where I feel you are strong and vice versa. And we are, we are good for each other. If you win, it's good for... For the kingdom. Yeah, it's even good for the podcasting ecosystem. Yeah. If you grow, it means growth for me as well. That mentality must come to the church. Mm. Wow, Lord Shady. <laughs> okay, uh, but uh, lastly, uh, just want us to talk about your podcast now. Yeah, man. Yeah. The Unchristian Podcast. Yeah. Why the Unchristian? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can ask the, 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 the Lord. Firstly, my, uh, the podcast, I, I, I run the podcast with my co host, Nandi Pambat. Um, our podcast is not anti Christ. Okay. It's not anti-church okay. okay it's it's not against christianity okay it's not against god yeah it's clearly put out there we chose the name the unchristian podcast because number one it is it is not a, a podcast for christians alone mm -hmm. it's not for christians alone yeah okay yes you come on the podcast and you will see that the views uh, are biblical, mm -hmm. the perspectives are biblical, but where the, the issue has come uh, is that Christianity has been made a religion. Ooh. Yeah. It has been made a religion. A religion is man-made. It's man's ways of trying to get closer to a God or appeasing a God. So within a religion, you find customs, rituals, traditions passed from one generation to, to another. And we just got to repeat and do them. And without even 
interrogating if they are biblical. Mm. Are they in line with God's spirit? Are they in line with God's heart? Right? And so you'll find that in all religions of the world, Christianity has been made even that as well. That, yeah. And so <clears throat> religion kills. Religion is dangerous. Religion is bondage. Mm. Okay. Um, so we need to come out of re being religious or having religious mindsets Mindset. as children of God and find our identities that we are, we are his children, we are his sons, and there is a kingdom that we are building. And within this kingdom, there are no church labels. Okay. So the Unchristian podcast then uh, has conversations, mm. brings perspectives and educates through, uh, 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 through viewpoints and perspectives that are not traditionally Christian. We have the conversations that the church is either unwilling or unable to, to address. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Difficult things. We go for it. And so that's why you can go to a church, you can go to another Christian podcast mm. to find certain things being spoken in a particular way. We are not that. That's how we had to say unchristian. Yeah, it it, 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 it definitely challenges your, your theology there. Oh. Or hey man. Are you strong in the Lord yeah, or yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> things are being shaken yeah, there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think it's a it's a good thing that we we get to to learn about Lutze mm. Uh I did mention like uh, you cause the havoc worth having, is it life butter? Life butter. <laughs> yeah, this one of our most recent guests, uh, Life Butter, who is a pastor and a sangom and young. Yeah. At the same time. <laughs> and uh, he says, you know, he's still born again, loves the Lord. He says, that will never change. Christ is Christ. So the two can coexist. He says, the two can coexist. <laughs> I love you. He <laughs> says. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know how when we start our podcast, there's always a screen, the, yeah. the views expressed here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> disclaimer. <laughs> that disclaimer there. That's what he says. But right. here's the thing. I disagree with him. Mm. I disagree with him a lot. But me disagreeing with him is not a reason for me to not be able to sit down with him, with him. and talk him and get to understand him. Understand. Is, isn't that being uh, unequally yoked? Yeah. No, I'm not, I'm not trying to build anything with him, okay. work on anything with him. But the least I could do is have a conversation with, with him. him. Understand. If I say I disagree with him, the question is, do I even understand what he stands for? Mm. He said, hi, I disagree with him. No, I don't believe what But do I even understand it, mm. Mm. the thing that he stands for? Do I understand? And so at least the, the least I can do is just understand the man, hear him out, but also find the human being behind, behind the beliefs the and the scandals yeah. and all of that. Let me find the human being. And when I, and that's what I, that's what happened with this, these shoots that we did with him. I found the human being. And I liked the human being. Yeah. Now, away from away from, from all this other things. The, the noise. Yeah. I, <coughs> I, I, and the human being behind the, the the newspaper headlines. And I found him. And the human being that, that I found was a really really nice guy. Mm. A really nice guy. I would. Uh, and I was criticized. You know, you saw, you saw the the, the divide that happened on social media. People didn't like the fact that we were that. I'll say something controversial. I'd rather have him as a friend. <laughs> I'd rather have him as a friend than some of my Christian brothers. Yeah. <laughs> no, I hear you. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. yeah. You'd, you'd rather go sit there by the bar than the, the church. <laughs> because I know what I'm dealing with, with him. Yeah. To be honest. Uh, and. My Christian brothers are going to lie to me uh, and say to me they love me if they don't. They don't. Yo, when are you loading it? <laughs> it's going to be uh, in two weeks. In two weeks. So we do two episodes with him. He came, there was a panel, 
and we did a panel with um, it was him and another Sangoma yeah. and, 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 and another um, guest who sort of well studied in the area mm. in, that, in that space. Then we did one, another episode, just with him. With him alone. One on yeah. one, just to get to know him and get to understand all the things that happened. And his ex-wife, who divorced him when all of these things were happening. Were happening. Okay, no, I'm looking forward to that, Maruti. But <laughs> then, uh, it was a great hour. Yeah, man. A very chilled one yeah, hour man. with you. Yeah. Yeah, I, enjoy, I feel like... Uh, I got to know you better and yeah. better and I don't know but yeah the Lord I'll keep on praying for marriage. I don't know <laughs> what I how I feel about that personally. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's nice man, go for it. <laughs> no, uh, my friends well most all of them are married. I yeah, always yeah. say but then nah man, it's yeah. nice being a bachelor, not having kids and the vibe. I get you. I get you. <laughs> What but, I always tell people is um, know yourself. Yeah. It's so important to know yourself and be happy in and of yourself before you get married. Mm. Um, that's one of the mistakes I did. One of the mistakes I did. Mm. I married very young. I was 20, 23 or 24 when I got married. Very knew myself. I didn't know what I wanted. I didn't know what made me happy mm. in, 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 in a romantic sense. Yeah. So to speak, as a man, I didn't know myself yet. It's one of the things that sort of was a, was a challenge. And so get to know yourself. If you want to get married out there, get to know yourself very well. Be happy with yourself. Yeah. Ah, guys, yeah. Nyala. I can't let you wear something. Nyala. I don't guys, uh, here with us. I think you, you, you taught us quite a lot, especially in the marriage sense, in the church vibe, yeah. and your experience. Yeah. I truly appreciate that. Uh, subscribe, to like, to share, and just spread the word, man. Let us grow the kingdom and let's grow the podcast. Until the next episode. Salang Sintli.